Over the last 49 years, there have been several dozen people named as D.B. Cooper suspects. They are a mix of characters including thieves, murderers, and assassins. However, one suspect, Joe Lakich, fits the D.B. Cooper attributes better than any previous suspects in eight different categories. Let's examine the superlatives of Joe Lakich. This page lists all eight of Joe's superlatives. Let's begin with the Dan Cooper connection. More than 30 years after the hijacking, the FBI realizes that the name Dan Cooper, used by the hijacker and shown on his plane ticket, had more significance than previously realized. Dan Cooper was a European comic book hero. He took on daring missions in the name of justice. But why would anybody who was intent on the ransom money identify with Dan Cooper? Wouldn't criminals use pseudonyms like Jesse James, Rob Ann Hood, Ali Baba, or Jay Dillinger? Dan Cooper was the anti-villain. This means that besides being stationed in Europe in the late 1950s, and besides being multilingual, Joe actually understood these comics and identified with the hero, a sensitive man who was the defender of good against evil. No suspect ever considered as this combination of being multilingual, stationed in Europe, and identifying with the hero, Dan Cooper. The Money Find It has been called the mystery within the mystery. The $5,800 of Cooper's money found along the banks of the Columbia River. Even the scientists that have done a great deal of analysis on these bills are at a loss to explain how it got there. But the recent scientific findings regarding the diatoms found on the bills indicate that they came from the Columbia River. The fact that they were found primarily from one season, the May-June time frame, not November when the hijacking occurred, is enlightening. This evidence verifies what I have stated in my book. Cooper escaped that night so many years ago by taking a boat down the Lewis River, then up the Columbia River to Tina Bar, the place where the money was found. He mistakenly dropped several bundles of cash on that cold, dark, and rainy November night. The subsequent spring flood submerged the cash, depositing the diatoms. The sediment in the river then buried the money through natural means. The floodwaters receded and the money sat buried in the sediment for almost eight years until it was discovered by Brian Ingram in early 1980. No one has a better explanation for how this discovered money got to Tina Bar, not to mention an explanation that also agrees with the scientific findings. Workplace Other suspects are at a total loss to explain the forensic evidence found on Cooper's clip-on tie. The citizen sleuths found unique metals and particles on the tie when it was examined under an electron microscope. Advocates state that their suspect worked near aircraft, where dumpster diving at Boeing, or just bought a used tie at five and dime. None of these explanations can account for the blended titanium particle found in his tie, nor the rare metals like bismuth, silver, gold, and palladium. However, this explanation is quite forward for Joe Lockett. Joe Lockett retired from the Army in 1961 and then worked in the electronics manufacturing industry for the next 10 years. He worked for a company named IEI and later Nashville Electronics, his place of employment in 1971. These companies manufactured electrolytic capacitors. Patents of that era discuss electrolytic capacitors constructed with metals that include stainless steel, aluminum, pure titanium, gold, silver, and even palladium. All of these metals were found in Cooper's tie. But more revealing was a unique particle found in the tie, which was pure titanium with a small quantity of 400 series stainless steel smeared into it. This blended particle not only required that these metals be present, but also some machinery to create the necessary forces to smear them together. 
This machining was described in a patent that was held by Nashville Electronics. Again, no other suspect ever considered can even come close to describing how these metals, and in particular the blended titanium particle, ended up in Cooper's tie. Appearance. Many suspects don't fit the physical description of Cooper. They are too short, too stout, have the wrong color eyes, don't have enough hair on the head, are too young, and so forth. However, Joe Lockett fits the physical description perfectly. He even has a dark complexion. But fitting the physical description doesn't guarantee that one's facial features will be a match. But this composite picture of Joe Lockett, with half of his face on one side and half of the FBI sketch of D.B. Cooper on the other, seals the deal. No other suspect ever considered can provide such a perfect match with both the physical description and the FBI sketch. The Grudge. It is well documented in the FBI records that D.B. Cooper was hijacking Northwest Flight 305 because he had a grudge to settle. Cooper's jump from the back of a 727 was a high-risk undertaking. A middle-aged man jumping out at night at 200 miles per hour with zero visibility on a cold and rainy November night. Expert skydivers state that they wouldn't make Cooper's jump for any sum of money. It was just that dangerous. What kind of grudge would it take to motivate a man to attempt a borderline suicidal jump? This is clearly another superlative of Joe Lackage. His daughter's untimely death, combined with the negligence, arrogance, harassment, and intimidation tactics used by the FBI, pushed Joe over the edge. His grudge was extreme. No other suspect's grudge can come close to the emotional devastation associated with losing one's child. Demino. Joe Lackett was described as a nice man, a truly likable individual by everyone I talked to. One man, who I will call Brian, told me that Joe was a quiet man, but when he spoke, he was extremely polite. I later discussed with Brian the possibility that Joe could be D.B. Cooper. He was certainly surprised. As, exa as he examined the information that I had on Joe's workplace, his service in Europe, and other data, he stated that he really didn't know anything about these attributes. However, Brian knew that Joe was ex-military because he was apparently well-disciplined. He knew what Joe looked like, and he understood why Joe would have a grudge. But he wasn't convinced that Joe was D.B. Cooper. Then I sent Brian two documents from the FBI records. This first document is from an interview with flight attendant Alice Hancock, in which she describes Cooper as very soft-spoken. I also provided this updated D.B. Cooper description, which includes the remark, very polite at all times. When Brian saw these documents, his reply to me was, that's him. No suspect ever considered has emphasized this combination of characteristics, soft-spoken and very polite. Logic. Again, it is well documented in the FBI records, Cooper hijacked Northwest Flight 305 because he had a grudge to settle. It's been over 49 years since the hijacking. Who has been avenged by D.B. Cooper? Some say it was Northwest Airlines. Some say it was Boeing, while others believe it was the U.S. military. But let's examine this logically. No one can correlate D.B. Cooper with misfortune at any of these aforementioned entities. But what about the FBI? They expended tens of thousands of man hours, considered over a thousand suspects, and spent millions of dollars on this case. After 45 years, an embarrassed FBI admitted defeat and closed the case. Now who would have more of a grudge against the FBI than Joe Lackage? Emotions. In 2003, Tina Mucklow will state, Cooper was a very sad man. And this is understandable, as his daughter Susan was killed just 51 days prior to the hijacking. So what is the probability that we have a military man who was stationed in Europe, 
who also has an answer for the money found on the Columbia River, who worked in a factory that utilized the plethora of rare metals found in his tie, fits the appearance criteria perfectly, and has a grudge so intense that he is willing to die getting his revenge. Joe Lockich is one in a trillion. D.B. Cooper can be no one else. So the saga of D.B. Cooper appears to be a happy story of a folk hero who beats the system and gets away. Part of the fascination with this legend owes to the fact that Cooper was very gentlemanly and he didn't kill or hurt anyone. In actuality, this is the story of a very sad man who just got pushed over the edge. D.B. Cooper has sometimes been referred to as a modern day Robin Hood. However, knowing the facts of this case, he is actually a modern day Count of Monte Cristo as he gets his revenge but does so in such an eloquent fashion. It has been said that Helen of Troy had such a beautiful face that it launched a thousand ships. This is the face that launched a 49 year old mystery.